The Lewis structure of aluminum fluoride is pretty straightforward once you realize that aluminum is a metal. It's on the left-hand side of this semi-metal staircase, and so it is a metal. Fluorine is on the right-hand side of the staircase. That makes it a non-metal. What do you get when you combine a metal and a non-metal? You get an ionic compound because there is a transfer of electrons from the metal to the non-metal. Now, in order to draw this, you'll need to know how many valence electrons are in each of those atoms. Aluminum is in group 13, so it brings three valence electrons with it. I'll draw my Al, one, two, three electrons in its outer shell. And fluorine is in group 17. That means it brings seven valence electrons with it. So I'll draw my F, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons. Now, what we said is the metal will give up its electrons or transfer them to the nonmetal. Now, nonmetals want eight electrons in its outer shell. It's called the octet rule, and it's because it makes them similar to noble gases. It's just how you make nonmetals stable. Fluorine already has seven so only needs one more. So the aluminum will give one electron to the fluorine, and now the fluorine is happy and stable. But where are these extra electrons from aluminum gonna go? What you actually need is more of these fluorines. Here's another one, here's another one. Now we have homes for all of the electrons that are being given away. That electron will go to that fluorine, and that electron will go to that fluorine. Now we have three fluorines, which have gained one electron each, and one aluminum, which gave away three electrons. It's no surprise that the chemical formula for aluminum fluoride is ALF3. You need one aluminum giving away its electrons across three fluorines. That's where it comes from. Now to draw the final structure here, I would draw my Al atom in the center with no electrons on it, and I put it in square brackets because there's a charge. The charge here is plus three because it lost three negatively charged electrons. And then I surround it with my three fluorines. Now the fluorines have eight electrons total, seven that they brought plus one from the aluminum, and that extra electron gives it a charge of minus one each. And there are three of them. So it's just going to take me a second to copy these out. I like distributing them so you don't have any minus charges that are right beside each other. They all look like they're clustered around a common plus there. That's it. This is my Lewis structure for aluminum fluoride. It's an ionic compound. As you can see, we have charges or ions in the structure. And here we're showing the transfer each of aluminum's three electrons go to a different fluorine atom. It's a beautiful thing, and it was easy, thanks to you. Best of luck.